hello friends you're welcome to my channel thank you so very much for tuning this channel today thank my subscribers thank you so very much god bless you for all of your support i really appreciate and if today is your first time of tuning this channel you are welcome please do well to hit the subscription button and tap on the bell by the side to get notification whenever i upload a new video today i'll be cutting this straight bustier gown is a long gown with a slit at the back the picture you're seeing on the screen so i will be showing you the process how you can achieve this beautiful gown so i have my lining here with me this is two years of lining i have my net it's a lycra net and i have the ankara fabric here this is three years of ankara fabric I will keep this aside, the lining and the fabric aside, and I will draft the upper part for you to see clearly. I will be using this uh, pattern paper to draft it. So this is my paper now, the back. I add my zipper allowance, and I use the biggest measurement, which is the bust, and I add the uh, three inches allowance to it. For drafting while the front I use the bust measurement and I added a six inches allowance to it so this line you're seeing here is my starting point and this one here the second line is my bust line so this is my starting point from my starting point to my bust length is 12 inches so I mark 12 and a half inches from my shoulder line to my under bust is 15 and a half inches. So I mark 16 inches, half inch to join the upper parts. From my shoulder line to the next line here, this one, is my half length, which is 18 inches. So I mark 18 and a half inches. Then this one here, the last line here, is one inch, half inch to join the upper parts, half inch to join the lower part so my paper is single here but if you're cutting it on fabric you need to fold it into two this is how we fold fabric to cut but because i'm drafting i'm using a single paper the front is always folded into two so all my measurements will start from this center front now i'll start from the neck the neck width here i will use three and a half inches so I'm going to mark three and a half inches like this. And the neck depth, I'm going to use three and a half inches. It depends on what you want. You can use three inches. You can use the three and a half. If you're using it for total neck, you use two and a half inches for width and the depth three inches. So this is my neck line now i'm going to mark the shoulder so the shoulder of this person is 18 inches divided by two so that will give me nine inches then i add half inch to it for seam allowance i will mark like this then i'll go ahead and mark my shoulders look one inch i'm going to connect it from the shoulder slope to the neck point like this So from shoulder slope now, I will mark my hand hole. You have to divide your round sleeve into two. And use it to mark ham hole. So I'll be using nine inches here to mark the ham hole. Another thing you can do, you divide the bust measurements by six and you add 1.5 to it. So this line here automatically has become my upper chest line so I'm going to mark the shoulder measurement here the nine and the half then I will rule a straight line like this to the shoulder so you can shoot at a one inch arrow or one and a half 
and connect your handhold. But for me, I'm going to use my curve roller like this. So this is my handhold now. But because it's front, let me mark the front handhold because first front handhold and the back are not the same. So I will divide the whatever I have here. I'm going to divide it into two. The midpoint. This is my midpoint now. Then I will go in by three quarter of an inch. You can use half inch if you're doing it for a slim person. So I'm going to connect the new handhold like this and blend it to the upper parts like so. So this is my new handhold now. This one here is my new handhold. The front. So the next place I will mark again is my yoke length. So the yoke length will be the one to decide. So I will be using seven and a half inches here because I'm using a lycra net that is not too transparent. So I will use seven and a half. So if you're marking yoke, if your yoke is seven inches, for net that is too transparent and stretchy, for instance, if I'm taking measurements now and it's seven inches for my clients, I'm going to minus six and a half. I'll leave the half inch to join the yoke. So for this one, I'm using seven and a half inches. So after marking the yoke now, I'm going to mark my that the nipple to nipple eight inches here. Yeah? So divided by two, that will give me four. I'll add half inch to it. So I'm marking four and a half like this. I'll just go ahead and mark four and a half. I'm going to mark four and a half to this point, the yoke point. And I will rule a straight line like this. So the next thing to do now, so this is my under bust line. This is the center front. So I will just, from this line now, I'll mark one and a half inches like this. Then I will come to the half length. I will mark one inch. So I'm going to connect it from the under bust to the half length like this. And I will connect it down like so. Then this is my bust line. I will come down by one inch like this. I'm going to connect my hand to this one inch like so. I see now. Now we see I use one and a half inch from this end on that bust to mark the bust here. If I'm making a bust here with a yoke, this is a pattern I normally use. Because when you take away the yoke, the bustier will look like off shoulder. So I have three different sizes here. You see the number one, the small one, and the second one, medium size, and the big one. For the small size, someone that the bust is like this, I will take this place now, this under bust, I will go in by one one quarter of an inch. You can use one inch, but if it's me, I will use one one quarter of an inch. Then for this number two, is what I'm using now. That is the medium size. I use one and a half inches. Now for number three, I can use one three quarter of an inch. Instead of one and a half, I will use one three quarter to carve my bust here. Like this. So having done that now, I'm going to come to this yoke line. And I will go in by one and a half inch. You can use one one quarter for the upper part. You can use one and a half inch. The same thing with here. And I will connect it. Now to the bust line, I will come up by one inch. Sorry. Then I will blend my marker to this one inch like this. If you are using it for a dress that you are going to cut neck. Again, like this one, I'm going to cut the neck out like sweetheart because of the yoke. I will come down here. That, that is why I'm using one and a half. The same thing with the under bust. But if you're using it like a square neck, you're not going. 
you're not going to cut anything out of the neck so you can use one inch or one one quarter for this upper part to have the first here like this then i will come to the side i will mark the one and a half also then i will turn my paper like this and blend my hand from this to this one inch here i see now then to the half length i can still use the same one and the half because it's the side why i push out this one because of the darts that will come from the down part so that they will blend together so i'm going to connect it like this the same one and the half inch like so connect it down like this so to the upper part i will also mark one and a half inch i see like this then i will curve my hand from this now to the one inch area so that the posture will accommodate the breast very well now having done this the neck i'm going to come down by one and a half inch you can use two inches you can use one and a half inch so i will blend my hand like it's a sweetheart neck i'm going to connect it to the upper part like this i see now so this is my neck the next thing i'm going to do now is to add my measurements so the bust circumference of this person is 44 inches divided by 4 that will give me 11 inches i will mark like this and i will add my 2 inches seam allowance when cutting the paper i will lose like half inch here so you can add the half inch back like this so this is my bust measurement now i will check the upper bust the upper bust measurement is 42 inches i'm going to divide it by four i will mark like this and i will add my two inches seam allowance like so then i will check what i will be losing here at this line here one and a half inches i'm going to mark it like this and i will connect it to my bust line are you seeing now then i will check the yoke area this point now I'll be losing three inches from it so i'm going to replace that three inches this is my arm o line this one here is the one i'm using the second hand so i will place my tape exactly that arm o line then i will add my three inches like this back if if you fail to add these three inches back that means you have a problem the yoke will not size this place when you finish joining this post here you have shortened there yeah? So at this point now, I will carve another new handhold like this. This is my 3 inches, remember? I'm going to connect it from the chest line measurement. I will connect it like this. Then I will connect this line to this point. So the down part will take this shape, while the upper part will take this shape. The next measurement is my under bust measurement. My under bust here is 37 inches. So I will divide it by 4, then I will mark like this, then I will add my seam allowance, 2 inches, then I will check what I will be losing here, 3 inches, I'm going to replace it back like so, I will connect from this bust line to this other bust line like this, then I will check my half length, circumference is 39 inches, so I'm going to mark 39 inches divided by 4, Will give me nine to a quarter of an inch so i will add my seam allowance two inches like this then i will check the allowance here three inches i will replace it back like this i will connect it like so see what i have here i'll come to this side now for my dress to sit well this is how i normally do it i'll take away one inch like this so from this one inch i blend my hand to the normal length like this and I will cut it out now. I'll cut.
cut the neck out like this. And I'll quickly take out my yolk like so. I'll cut out the neck. So this is my yolk. This is not needed anymore. I can pick the center front now and place it like this to cut the side since it's the same measurement so that the bust here will be equal. The both of them will be equal. Then I can take it out now. At this point, I will notch my under bust line. Very important. I will notch this one. Then I will cut out the length like this. So see what I have now. The next thing to do is to cut the back now. So this is the back now. This line here you're seeing is my starting point. And this one here is my zipper allowance one and a half inch. From the starting point, I have my bust line, under bust line, half length line, and sewing allowance. So I will quickly mark my neck now. The neck width is three and a half inches. The same thing with the front. And the depth here, you can, you can decide to make it high neck. You can decide to make it the same thing with the front. For now, let me mark high neck, one and a half inch. So I will connect it like this. And blend it to the zipper line so this is my neck line now I'm going to mark the shoulder like this I'll come down by one inch the shoulder slope then I will connect it together like this my hand hole line it's the same thing with the front, 9 inches. I will rule a line. Then the same shoulder measurements, 9 and a half. I'm going to mark it here. And I will connect it like so. So I will use my curve ruler. And blend it like this. This is the back handle. It's different from the front handle. So the next thing to do is to mark my nipple to nipple, which is the dart. I'm going to mark it like this, the same four and a half from my zipper line. You see where my measurement is starting? This one is for zipper, so I'm starting all my measurements here. So I will rule a straight line like this. So for my dart now, you can use half inch, you can use three quarter because of so three quarter of an inch, the same thing to this side, three quarter like this. So to my under bust, I will mark three quarter also. And I will mark this, the side, three quarter like this. So I'm going to connect it like this. And I will blend it to the bust line, like so. I will connect the side and I will blend it to the bust line. For smaller person, you can use a half inch to curve your dart. It's okay. So I will quickly mark my yoke length. So the yoke length at the back, let me use a 8 inches like this. I'm going to rule 8 inches. So for the yoke, you decide if you're to make it uh, the same thing with the front. You just go ahead and come down and curve the sweater. Just curve it like this. But for this one, I'm going to use a round shape, not sweater. So I will come to this point like this. I want it to have a round shape. So I even come down also by one inch like this. Now I'm going to quickly connect the dart line also to this point. So see my dart line now. 
So I will add my bust measurements divided by four. I'll go ahead and mark and I will add my two inches allowance. This dark area, I will lose like half inch. So I'm going to add half inch to it. Now to my chest line, which is uh, 42 inches. I'll go, I'll go ahead and mark 42 inches divided by four. Then I will add my two inches seam allowance. I'll add my half inch for the dart. I'll lose half inch when I cut out the princess dart like this. Now to my under bust, my under bust is 37 inches. So I'll go ahead and mark 37 inches, nine one quarter. I will add my two inches seam allowance. I will check what I will be losing here, one and a half inch. I'm going to add it back and I will connect like this to my half length circumference is 39 inches divided by four nine three quarter i will mark and i will add my two inches seam allowance i'm going to check the tax what i'll be using here one and a half inch so i will just connect it like so now i haven't done that i'll come to the side i'll take away one inch the same thing i did in front then i'll blend it to the normal length like this i think so to take away my zipper gorge, I'm going to mark from the shoulder line. I'll use nine inches for this person. Nine inches from the nine inches, I'll mark half inch. So I'm going to mark half inch till down, half inch like this. Then I will connect it to the neckline, like from the nine inches, I will connect it to the upper part, like this, I saw the shape. Then to the down part, to take away the zipper board. Okay, let me leave this first. I'll do that together with the Ankara fabric. So I'm going to cut it out now. I'll cut the neck. So this zipper board that I take away half inch, when fixing the zip, you have to still use one and a half inch. That way you get the shape at the back. So I will keep this aside. So how to cut the down part now? This is the front and this is the back. The back is into two, it's open into two. With the zipper allowance of two inches, this is the front now. The front is folded. This part is open and this part is not open. This is the center front. So the line you are seeing here, this first line is my starting point. I just marked up for you to see. And this second one here is my hip length. I place my tape like this. I minus the upper part, which is 18 inches, and I mark my hip length. The hip length is 28. I mark 28 and a half, and I still hold my tape like that. This is the knee length. This chalk you're seeing here is the knee length. So the knee length of this person is 42 inches. I mark 40 inches, and I hold my tape like that to secure the full length of the gown. The full length of the gown is... Uh, 59 inches so 59 inches i add three and a half inches to it this is how i sew my gown if i want to line it full so the zipper allowance is two inches you can use one and a half you can use two inches the half length circumference is what i will add here we use a 37 inches for the upper part, 37 inches divided by 4. So I will go ahead and mark my 9 1 quarter like this. So I will go ahead and add my sewing allowance 1 and a half inch. Because this one has no princess that the upper part will add the 2 inches. But this one has no princess that. Then I will add my that allowance 1 inch like this. I will come to the hip circumference 
the hip circumference is 48 divided by 4. I will go ahead and mark, then I will add a one and a half inches. I will now add that allowance. So I will connect my chop from this point to this point, like so. From the hip line, I will come down by two inches. I will still extend my hip shape to the two inches like this. I see now to have a nice curve. Now I will come to the knee, measure what I have at the hip here. Yeah. It's 13 and a half. I will come to the knee, then I will take away two inches from that 13 and a half, like this. You see, I will mark two inches away. So I will connect my hand like this to these two inches, like so. Let me shift my fabric up for you to see the down. So the down part of it, I will add. 13 and a half, instead of 2 inches, I will take away 3 inches from it, I see. Because the knee and the ankle are not the same. So I will connect my chalk like this to down. Raise it up like this. I will check my measurement. You know, I added a 3 and a half inches to the down part. So I will be using 2 and a half. Then I will leave a 1 inch to join the upper part. And for the lining, my cutting will climb on top here like so. So I haven't done that. The next thing to do is to mark the dart. We use four and a half to mark the dart. I will use the four and a half like this. Now the front dart, for myself like this, I will use seven inches to mark it. Because, because if I place my tape from where the journey will start to this point, I will have like seven inches. So you just make your dart to stop before the hip. So I'm using 7 inches. You can use 6 inches, you can use 5 inches. It depends on the person you are making the dress for. Then from this point now, the 4 and a half, I will go ahead and mark the 3 quarter. Now this dart line, I will connect the, the 4 and a half like this. So I will place my chop to connect my dart like so. So this will be my dart shape because it's a gown now i will pick the front part like this and check to make sure that this line they are equal the upper part like this i see now let me shift it down a bit okay for you to see so i will pick the front panel like this and place it to make sure that they are equal so like so and the back this is the back panel i will also place it like so you know the zipper allowance is two inches instead of one and a half but i want the line to be equal so i'm going to slant something like this from my zipper allowance this is my hip length so i will slant my hand and make sure i i come out like so before the hip i see now so that this upper part and this one will be equal when I'm sewing the dress and it will still fit well it will give a room for the hip to balance very well so I'll go ahead and cut it out now I'm cutting from the down part like this and I will quickly notch this uh, sewing allowance here I'll shift it down Now I will take away this excess here. I don't want the right top to show. Then I will cut out this excess at the zipper line like this. Just notch like this to know that this is my dart. And I will also notch this part, the zipper line, so that we know the folded allowance. So the next place I will be marking now will be the back dart. You know, I just notch the dart line front and back like this. So I'm through with the front, but I will first of all mark my zipper allowance like this. I see now, I will mark chalk on my zipper allowance. Then I will take away the front like so. I will open it like this. And come to the back that I use seven inches 
in front so the back I'm going to use six inches I'll take away one inch from it like this or you can use five and a half you can use five inches it depends on the person now I will stretch this line the four and a half like this so the back that and the front are not the same so I will mark that three quarter so I will mark the three quarter like this yeah and I will mark it this way I will blend it to this line like so so this is the back that now the shape which I measure with this one is are you seeing now is equal from the zipper line because I took away SS here to make it equal so that the princess that and the that will align together now the next thing to do which is very important because it's a gown and for the zipper to balance well you know I've been saying it in almost all my video it's not everybody you take away one inch or one and a half from the back measurements like this there are some persons that uh, the way they stand you don't need to take anything away their back is longer than the front I have a client like that so because of the experience I always take measurements at the back so the yoke that we minus from back you remember is eight inches eight inches yes eight inches so I'm going to minus that eight inches like this to check the back where this dress will sit well on my body is 17 and a half like this 17 and a half so I will now add this inch so if you check I'm taking away one inch for this zip so if you check now what is left is to take away one inch from this back now for my zipper to sit perfectly so I will blend that one inch now to the normal length I see so this will be the shape at the back now to the skirt you can call it skirt I'm going to take away one inch also like this one inch like so and I will blend it stop before the measurement this is the sewing allowance I'm going to stop before the sewing allowance so that it will not affect the length of my gown so I will take away this one inch like this so if you do this your gown will sit perfectly with the zipper so I will take it out like this now and I will also notch this line back in that line I won't forget that then I will take this part out I will blend it in like this yes so see how it's going to be I see now this way the zipper will sit perfectly so I will keep this aside now I move to the sleeve so if you don't know how to cut sleeve probably you can check it out on my channel for beginners I can't give you full detail on this uh, tutorial so the length sleeve is 26 inches so I'm using 27 inches one inch to join the upper part and the down part and this fabric uh, and this net stretch I see now the side stretch why the length was not stretched like that the way because of the way the net is because it's stretchy so my round sleeve measurement is 18 inches that I'm supposed to use the 9 inches so I'm using 8 instead of 9 that is the width divided by 2 I'm using 8 so I'll just connect my hand like this so this will be my cap height now now the round sleeve I'm using 8 instead of 9 then the elbow round sleeve is 15 that is seven and a half but I'm using a I'm taking away one inch from it so I will connect it like this so the reach the round sleeve is nine and a half inches I will also take away one inch from it like this so this will be my measurement now I see so if you stretch it like this you will still get that uh, let me stretch it for you to see 
if I stretch it like this, with the sewing, I still have sewing allowance and the nine and a half. If not, you will just have excess uh, fabric everywhere. So I'll go ahead and cut it out like this now. So see my sleeve now. I'll go ahead and open the down part of it because I cut the two together. So how to achieve the second sleeve at the upper part? Now this fabric is 10 inches. You can the length, I'm using the full Ankara length. Are you seeing? The Ankara length is what I'm using. That is the round sleeve now. I'm supposed to divide it into two. Let me check. This is 18. Another 18. The round sleeve is supposed to be times two. Then I have extra nine inches on top. It's okay, it will make the gather full. So this is all. Make sure you watch the sewing of this gown. I want to give a full detail about this gown. Thank you so very much for watching. See you in my next video.